Concerns over an undiagnosed pneumonia outbreak reported across China, with sick children overwhelming hospitals. We get an inside scoop straight from parents and health workers. The world's biggest crypto exchange now paying one of the largest corporate penalties. Binance's CEO pleads guilty to breaking U.S. law. Binance facilitated billions of dollars of unregulated cryptocurrency transactions. Taiwanese voters are preparing to select their next president, while China is ramping up air incursions, sending 11 more planes over the unofficial boundary between them. With revenue tripled on AI, NVIDIA yet warning a significant decline in sales from China. A closer look at why. What do you think of the outlook? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. A wave of mysterious pneumonia cases is spreading through China. The illness is mostly affecting children and patients are overwhelming Chinese hospitals. The respiratory department of one hospital reports seeing more than 3,500 patients a day. Chinese experts say the disease can be traced back to certain combined pathogens, including COVID-19, the flu, and mycoplasma pneumonia. Parents say symptoms are often severe. This time, the child had a high fever repeatedly, which never went down. This is too scary. My wife's sister's child is sick. She has a fever of 107 degrees and a cough. There are no beds available in the hospital. A former Chinese reporter posted a conversation about the issue in a group chat, indicating that at least one child has died of the illness. The infection is circulating in the area surrounding Beijing, as well as in Dalian, a city almost 500 miles from Beijing. A hospital staff member from Tianjin City told us that hospitals are so overwhelmed, some children wait days for treatment. Parents start scrambling several days in advance to get the numbers. We only have so many doctors, and we can only handle so many people every day. So we give out a certain amount of numbers every day. You can book in advance, but you have to be able to grab one first, because a huge number of children are getting sick. The wave first appeared one month ago and is getting worse. Parents told us some schools have suspended classes as both teachers and students are sick. They added that authorities are trying to block information related to it from circulating online. This kind of information is definitely not allowed to be spread. Weibo will delete accounts that spread it. It's not allowed. If you want to get to the root of the issue, they'll come warn you or even arrest you if it gets serious. We're all on tender hooks. Chinese media say no one has died so far. Due to Chinese authorities' record of underreporting infections and covering up information, it's difficult to assess the true scale of the current outbreak. The head of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, stepping down after pleading guilty to breaking U.S. law. The crypto exchange has to pay a hefty $4 billion in penalties for charges related to money laundering. According to data from an analysis firm, Binance has seen outflows amounting to more than $1 billion in the past 24 hours. Here's more. It willfully enabled hundreds... U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced a plea deal on Tuesday. Binance Chief Chang Peng Zhao will personally pay $50 million, and the firm he founded will pay a $4 billion penalty. Prosecutors described the deal as one of the largest corporate penalties in U.S. history. Binance facilitated billions of dollars of unregulated cryptocurrency transactions. It willfully enabled hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions between American users and users subject to U.S. sanctions. And its platform accommodated criminals across the world who use Binance to move their stolen funds and other criminal proceeds. The Justice Department says the agreement will settle criminal charges against Binance for conspiracy, sanctions breaching, and an unlicensed money transmitter business. 
Binance has been under the department's scrutiny since at least 2018. The plea deal also resolved civil charges filed in March by the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, accusing the crypto platform of failing to detect and prevent terrorist financing. In 2019, Binance's former compliance chief acknowledged transactions by the terrorist group Hamas. Binance was originally based in China, but it has repeatedly denied any association with the country. It has moved out of the country when Beijing banned crypto exchanges a few years ago. Financial Times says Binance's CEO and other senior executives has instructed employees to hide the company's Chinese presence. The concealed presence carries a hidden hazard. The question of whether Beijing can access Binance's data, and that's including uh, that of its U.S. users. Under Chinese law, companies have to hand over user data if officials ask for it. Binance dismissed the concern. American chip giant NVIDIA reports more blockbuster earnings Tuesday, fueled by surging global demand for AI chips. But the company says it expects a sharp decline in sales from a key AI player, China. Why? The latest U.S. export restrictions are in effect. Let's take a look. NVIDIA keeps beating Wall Street forecasts. The U.S. chipmaker has been one of the big winners from the AI boom. Its semiconductors dominate the market for the new artificial intelligence services. On Tuesday, the firm again lifted its outlook. NVIDIA now forecasts current quarter revenue of around $20 billion. That is well ahead of analyst forecasts. Revenue for the third quarter also came in around $2 billion higher than expected. U.S. controls on the export of cutting-edge chips to China are now the company's big worry. NVIDIA expects a steep drop in fourth-quarter sales to the country as a result. It has developed lower-powered chips that get around the restrictions. But industry experts say that takes away vital research resources, and the products could just end up on the banned list anyway. NVIDIA stock is up around 240% so far this year, but slipped a little in U.S. after-hours trade following the China warning. Should the U.S. trust the Chinese Communist Party? President Biden is casting doubt. And some Republicans say we shouldn't believe a single word from the regime. NTD Cyrus Tao has more on a recent deal where China agreed to stop the flow of deadly fentanyl from reaching the U.S. After announcing a deal with China to curb the flow of fentanyl, President Biden now sounding skeptical about whether the Chinese regime would actually follow through. Watch. So the United States is going to seek to work together with China to target the fentanyl components. We're not just going to trust that this, this is happening. We have to verify it. During the APEC summit in San Francisco last week, the White House announced that China had agreed to work with the U.S. to crack down on chemicals needed to make fentanyl, nearly all of which come from China. For more than a year, Chinese officials have been reluctant to cooperate with the U.S. to curb this flow. And now, despite this deal, Biden's director of drug policy, Rahul Gupta, is also casting doubt on Beijing's words by pointing to the fact that the last time China had agreed to crack down on fentanyl in 2019, it just started instead to ship the ingredients needed to make it to Mexico. Republican Senator Rick Scott saying directly in the statement that he does not trust a word that Xi Jinping says and neither should any American, including Joe Biden. Congressman Mike Gallagher also skeptical about last week's agreement. I'm skeptical of the fentanyl agreement, I have to confess, only because we've seen this movie before. But we tend to pay cash up front, but for the CCP, the check is always in the mail. Just last month, the Justice Department indicted eight Chinese companies in the fentanyl supply chain. The DOJ says they use a wide range of trafficking tactics, from encrypted messaging apps to fake shipping schemes and Bitcoin payments, all to ply and cover their trade, leading to the deaths of Americans. The Taiwanese military is calling attention to another round of air incursions from Beijing. Taiwan's defense ministry reported Wednesday that 11 Chinese warplanes crossed the sensitive median line of the Taiwan Strait. It's the unofficial boundary separating the island from mainland China. Taiwan sent its own forces to monitor the situation. 
The military flex comes as Taiwan prepares to select a new president. This week marks the deadline for candidates to register. The island's ruling Democratic Progressive Party registered its presidential ticket one day before the incursion. Beijing strongly opposes the party and has been accused of interfering in the island's elections. Instead, it shows support for the island's main opposition party, which promises close ties to Beijing if it wins. Taiwan staunchly rejects China's sovereignty claims, saying only its people can decide their future. Taiwan has never been ruled by the Chinese Communist Party. Voters will head to the polls on January 13th. Beijing's latest military drills around Taiwan come after a recent meeting between the U.S. and China. In it, China's regime leader called Taiwan the biggest issue facing current U.S.-China ties. How should we read the remark? NTD's Evelyn Lee sat down with Greg Copley, president of the International Strategic Studies Association, for details. The reality is that the People's Republic of China is not yet ready militarily to invade Taiwan, so it's going to have to adopt other approaches to trying to constrain Taiwan in order to save Xi Jinping because he has staked his career on recapturing or capturing rather uh, Taiwan and bringing it into the People's Republic of China. This is never part of the People's Republic of China before. So he's going to do something, otherwise his position within the Communist Party is finished. Uh, he has presided over the collapse of the economy, he has delivered nothing, uh, and, he's, and it's all on the promise that Taiwan will somehow be brought into the Communist family. And that's unlikely to happen through military means at this stage. So he will try something else, which could be a quarantining of the island uh, of Taiwan uh, in, in the near future, probably after the January elections in the, uh, in the in the Republic of China, Taiwan. I want to touch on what uh, Biden was saying during the press conference, that the U.S. will maintain a one-China policy. Now, what exactly does that mean? Washington's policy is this concept of strategic ambiguity, uh, saying things which don't necessarily give you a clear idea of where they're going. Uh, in reality, even under the Biden administration, which has been very soft on Xi Jinping, uh, there has been a, uh, a great improvement in the military support for Taiwan. Uh, and that's, uh, that's occurring not just from the US, but also from Japan and, and other allies. So uh, basically, uh, both Xi and Biden have indicated no change at all in their intentions there. Uh, the US, however, is getting much more accustomed to the thought uh, of, 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 as to how it will link with the Republic of China, the Taiwanese armed forces, and reinforce them at, a, at critical times. Uh, so that message has, has been received loudly and clearly right. by the PLA, uh, which, which does not want to risk this escalation at this time. Now today's top stories from Asia. North Korea's leader may now have a better view of key U.S. military facilities. According to the country's state media, the regime said it had successfully placed its first spy satellite in orbit Tuesday. Kim Jong-un was reportedly briefed on the orbiting satellite's operations. At its control center, he was said to have viewed photos of U.S. military installations on Guam, including the Anderson Air Force Base. The spy satellite is scheduled to begin its formal reconnaissance mission on December 1st. That's after adjustments are made over the next few days. Amid growing threats from the north, South Korea will resume aerial surveillance activities near the shared border. The South Korean government decided to suspend the no-fly zones near North Korea. The North Korean regime is entirely responsible for the whole of this situation. And if North Korea makes any additional provocation, our military will immediately and vigorously punish North Korea based on the firm South Korea-U.S. joint defense posture. The 2018 inter-Korean military agreement will be partially suspended later Wednesday. Under the agreement, the two countries seized all hostile acts against each other. They also launched military confidence-building measures like no-fly zones. South Korea said its decision on whether to pull out of the agreement would depend on the North's follow-up actions. And still more response from South Korea. The nation's defense minister visited the U.S. aircraft carrier Carl Vinson Wednesday. The ship arrived at a port in the South Korean city of Busan on Tuesday. 
Its presence is an effort to deter North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. The carrier strike group's commander says the U.S.-South Korean alliance is strong. The U.S. Navy will continue training, information sharing and sailing with allies and partners across the globe to enhance capabilities and improve coordination on mutually agreeable issues. The work we do here with the Republic of Korea and allies makes us stronger in this critical time of uncertainty around the globe. Bottom line is deterring aggression in the Indo-Pacific region. Outside South Korea, the U.S. military is also working with the Philippines. Military troops from both countries are holding joint sea and air patrols in waters near Taiwan. The three-day exercises started Tuesday. The Philippine president called it a significant initiative. The drill started around the Philippines' northernmost point, located about 60 miles from Taiwan. It will end in the South China Sea. Security engagements between the U.S. and the Philippines have soared this year, sparking more tension with the Chinese regime. That's all for today's China In Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than two years. Last month, YouTube removed our demonetization status but reimposed it within days. If you'd like to support us, subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes or consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus. Here's what to look out for in our second half. When Hamas rained thousands of rockets down on Israel in a sudden attack, a retired colonel with extensive pilot experience in the Middle East says the terrorist group may have bet on allies for support. What's really happening? A Hamas leader has called for cooperation with China and Russia in its fight against Israel. Could this escalate into a larger conflict? We sat down with Eric Buer, retired colonel of the United States Marine Corps and author of Ghosts of Baghdad for Insight. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.